Good evening uh, to all of you all, Mr. Kanodia, Mr. Notia, it, um, it gives me a certain sense of confidence and uh, pleasure to be with you because as you rightly pointed out, in this time of uncertainty, the more the industry engages with the government and with industry counterparts elsewhere, there can be a greater sharing of ideas and it is that which is going to help in uh, better formulation of policies, better execution of policy, and it is because of such uh, proactive uh, response which the industry would want from time to time. It's not as if it is so, so static that you can do it once and then just forget about it. So uh, it is only when government start responding and reacting can they be relevant for a dynamic process and industry needs that kind of interaction with the government and therefore it gives me great pleasure to be here and also uh, I understand quite a few ministers, former ministers, policy makers have all been part of this uh, two day deliberations that you've had um, in the uh, context of your general body meeting and I would think FIKI's engagement, not just with government, but also with its counterparts everywhere in the globe, has constantly fed into policy making, and it is that which has got to be continued in these trying times. So I would think FIKI will have to be a lot more proactive. You've already been proactive, you've engaged with many countries. If anything, the governments get benefit of inputs from you all, but I would think now is the time when the engagement has to be literally across the board, choose regions uh, where you're less res represented or where you're less in contact, you should definitely put forward uh, the additional energy that is required to build in context. The uncertainty must have been very well explained by the finance minister, by many speakers. Um, one doesn't have to go into it in great detail. But it is a matter of fact that the global economy is not growing more than 3.1% 2016. And if anything, it is expected to grow by an additional 0.3%. So the assessment which is being given to us, the forecast which is being made, is that the global economy which is growing at 3.1% now would probably grow by 3.4% or 3.5 percent at the outside. So if that is the uh, prospect of global growth, what is it that we're going to do? Our target, if you look at it from whether trade, investment and everything else, is very ambitious. In trade, we expect to, we are at 2 percent today of the global total trade which is happening. Whereas by 2020, we hope to reach about 3.5%. We want to capture the global trade to the extent of 3.5% global trade uh, for us, for India. And if that's got to be achieved, it has got to be achieved by industry, by the exporters, by the various um, segments within India which has had this inherent strength of being valued globally and by the newer, uh, let us say, units which are coming up, which aspire to be a part of the global value chain. So you have the traditional industries which have always uh, had a share in the global market, but which should now be given the additional incentive, opportunity, opening to go and get into newer markets. And the newer uh, sectors which are growing, which are going to be a part of the global value chain because of their global competitiveness, will also have to contribute by getting access to markets elsewhere. So as government, as a minister belonging to uh, representing the commerce ministry, 
it is incumbent upon us to ensure that the bilateral, multilateral, plurilateral trade negotiations that we are engaged in, we are constantly keeping this requirement in mind. Traditional industries to find newer markets, traditional industries to find expansion in existing markets, and the newer industries, newer areas which are growing to enter into markets which are otherwise not available to them. That's not an easy task, but it is very clear that that's a path which we have to definitely trod, work hard and move forward. But as it is, the world is becoming very protectionist. I don't need to repeat, in spite of all the, uh, uh, what can I say, the enthusiasts, the academics, the policy makers, the theoreticians, all speaking for free trade, all speaking against protectionism, all decrying non-trade barriers, there is a very high degree of protectionism across the globe. So even if it worried me initially saying, we were talked down to by most countries, saying you can't be protectionist, India has to open up, India has to open up. Open up in agriculture, open up in manufacturing, open up in textiles, open up in every possible way. Open up, give us access. Which is very well, because you have a very big aspiring middle class, which has good purchasing power, which has seen the market all over the world, which wants very good, absolutely qualitatively superior products. And therefore, opening up has its gains. But can that be opening up for complying with the need to be a part of this free trade world? Or has it got to be a careful opening up <coughs> in such a way that our consumer instincts are served, consumer instinct for better products, for cheaper price, affordable price, has got to be served? Or has it got to be a careful balancing of serve your consumer, but as much take care of the industries who are struggling to remain there, give jobs, and possibly improve to export from their end also. So this balancing act is a very important thing, and that is where, to what extent do you balance? To what extent do you open up? And which are those sectors which are precariously perched that any degree of opening up can hurt them. Our inputs on which Fiki-like bodies are the ones who can give us picture of ground reality. So I can have a target set for India to reach 3.5% of the global trade by 2020. But what is the basket of goods and services which can be put into it without a threat in the sense that every time you expand into an export market, you also will have to open up to that extent for those countries something from India. So what is it that you can open up? It's a very, very carefully balanced act that one has to perform in an increasingly global protectionist world. And when you are balancing, you are told you're protectionist, but when you highlight others being protectionist, there are n number of other technical jargons given to us. Yes, India is also doing a lot of work in terms of understanding trade or tariff regulations, regulations in terms of uh, various non-tariff measures, regulations or standards which you have to meet, the meteorological requirements, the assessment standards, Compliance in assessments, whether it is phytosanitary and other compliances. We are doing a lot of, uh, you know, standards conclave. I'm sure many of you all would have been part of it. Till now, about nine standards conclaves have been held. In fact, many in the regions and uh, some at the national level, four, I think, at the national level, and the rest of them have been held in the regional level, just to build awareness on what these standards are going to be, global standards by sector, and in order to comply with these standards, we 
have to be sure that the ministries work together with every segment and establish the standards so that the industry is also part of the decision making. And once the standards are there in place, we are at least able to stop or ward off unwanted imports. Without that, stopping imports has also become a challenge. You really can't import or stop import by saying, I don't like the country, I don't want the import from them. That's just not consistent. And therefore, today I would think the role of FICI in understanding global uh, standards, in understanding regulations, in understanding what it takes to have accreditation. Because many of our products which are capable of going out do not have the appropriate accreditation. And without that, you're not just going to be able to access market. You are very conscious of it. You are aware of it. But many of our units are not. Many of our manufacturing units are not. We need to spend time. Government is willing to spend time, do a lot of road shows, explain what is expected of industry to uh, you know, meet up with global standards and accreditation which is required. And I'll take the example after two full years. From June 2014, after two full years of detailed, intense engagement with China, about 14 institutions have been given the recognition by the Chinese for export from India of non-Basmati rice. It takes that kind of time and engagement. Intense periodic engagement, invitation to have teams come from China to inspect our own uh, you know, labs and phytosanitary places which can certify products that they don't have certain unwanted residues, they are hygienically packed and so on. It takes nearly two full years with several engagement for any new facility, any new opening up to be done. And if that's with one country, so it is with every other country too. But in this, of course, I'd like to say the role of uh, services sector in India is really commendable. India is becoming more a service economy. You are aware that it contributes, the service sector contributes to more than 51% of our GDP. But exports and services were only about 15 or 14.5 in 2001. Today, they have touched about 155 billion US dollars. And that is about 7% of our GDP. Exports of services alone is 7.5% of our GDP. But even they have severe challenges. You were very clearly talking about 2016, Yes, we'll all mark 2016 for the various uncertainties. The unexpected election in the US, where the campaign was bitter. We respect the outcome. But the outcome after a bitter campaign, and then the kind of statements that we're hearing about what is going to happen to various institutions, whether US is a membership of the UN, whether it is a question of what they're going to do for, the TPP, everything. You're right in saying that there is a great degree of uncertainty. Whether it is Italy's referendum and its outcome, the Prime Minister had to resign. Whether it's Brexit, whether it is the wave of change which probably is going to happen in France, in Germany, the elections in Germany, and far away in New Zealand, the Prime Minister suddenly resigning, chooses to resign. We've just had him visit India and all of you all were part of that, you know, high level interaction with the New Zealand delegation. So these are completely marked by the uncertainties, not just in the economic sphere, but also politically. Drastic changes in economies which are already in bad shape. Europe no longer is with economies which are likely to grow over a certain number of, you know, uh, certain uh, level of growth. The maximum that a good and performing Germany is able to achieve is about 1%, short of 1% growth. And therefore, India with our growth, India with our middle class, India with our purchasing power, 
India with our manufacturing emphasis because of this government's make in India. India again opening up on many sectors. Our ranking might not have changed globally in ease of doing business, but all of us know that here is a government which is trying to push and remove hurdles. There may be many more, but we in the two years have shown you whether it is legislative, whether it is regulatory, whether it is a Team India issue pertaining to the state governments. Periodically, we are meeting with all of them and identifying issues and saying, can we, you know, ease this out? The Board of Trade was formed and many of your uh, eminent members are part of the, my Board of uh, Trade. We've had a meeting, sooner we are likely to have a meeting. The inputs which come from these meetings are immediately fed into decision making. The group of secretaries who were part of different ministries were appointed by the Prime Minister to look at various inputs which have come from industry and they were no, just not a talking shop. The inputs which came from these group of secretaries were taken seriously, many of them were implemented. That much before the current year's group of secretaries were formed, many of them openly conceded that they never expected their inputs to be put into policy that their inputs will be taken seriously. So here is a government which is very keen to open up. You saw it in the FDI. You also saw it the way every now and then the policy was reviewed so that the cap can be changed, the regulations can be simplified, where they were requiring three times the formulation to prove that they are safe, they are secure, they've got the uh, clearance from Home Ministry. We have made do with two more such as two ex uh, repetitive uh, you know, diligence and kept it at one so that approvals happen speedily and quickly without uh, repetition. So there is very clearly an attempt by this government to be industry friendly, small, medium, big, all industries. There can be continuously an allegation put at us saying your suit boot car sakar, but we've done as much for farmers as much for small and medium industries. So here is a government which is responsive, which takes inputs from industry. These are trying tem times when uncertainty, when fluctuations, when um, volatility are all becoming the new normal. But in that, we expect the industry's engagement with the government and that can probably make the government also stay clear from ambiguous or uncertain regulations or rules, in fact, cut down on regula regulations and help the industry to move forward speedily without much of a worry about compliances. So I'm happy that the annual general body is looking at these issues, making people talk from the government, also engaging with the government. Please keep the good work going for this year also. We are with you. We'll expect you to do a lot more particularly at a time when we are talking about digital payment mechanism, I'm sure I'll take this opportunity to underline that you would please ensure that from among your members, this enthusiasm of the government to convert and move towards digital payment is also carried forward by you and your members so that there shall not be any industry however small, however engaging, manual, however engaging migrant or um, semi-skilled, unskilled workers will not encourage cash payments. I would seek your cooperation on this for the sake of the government which is working towards cleaning up our economy so that we don't have a gray operating along with the white. We need transparency. Every financial transaction will have to be tracked down should be traceable, the, trial, the trail should be clear. The trail is what is going to help in generating future revenues. So you, I seek your cooperation to ensuring that e-payments are encouraged and no cash payments happen in any of your activities. I would uh, honestly request the FIKI to put, put its energy in promoting government's cash, less cash India. So with these words, I thank all of you all for having given me this opportunity and wish